In this video, we study the problem of maintaining a consistent state in a distributed system. This problem is often referred to as state replication. The goal is to get an understanding of the challenges and the pros and cons of different approaches to overcome them. Let's start by introducing an abstraction. A distributed system may consist of various different types of machines and devices that can run computations and communicate over certain communication channels. For our purposes, it doesn't matter what type of device it is, we simply call any part of the distributed system a node. The distributed system consists of multiple nodes, each node has its own memory and carries out its own local computations. The only way to interact with other nodes is to exchange messages. While we don't care what computational device it is, we may assign different roles to the nodes. In the client-server model, there are clients that send commands to be executed by servers. Note that even in the simplest case of one client and one server, there are challenges that need to be addressed. For example, if we don't make any assumptions about the time it takes to deliver messages, a client cannot know whether its command has been executed. Maybe the command has not been executed because message delivery is exceptionally slow or it has already been executed and the response simply has not arrived at the client yet. How could the client handle this situation? If there is a chance that the message got lost, it could simply decide to issue the same command again. However, if the server did execute it, then there is now the risk of executing the same command twice, which was not the client's intention. How can this problem be fixed? I suggest stopping the video now to think about a possible solution. We'll continue here shortly. Ready? A straightforward solution is to store information about executed commands at the server. If it receives the same command again, it will ignore the request or reply again that it has already executed the command. One way to implement this is to associate each command with a number, incrementing the next expected number at the server with each request. If a request to execute a command arrives with a lower number, the command is not executed. If there is only one server, the system is not robust. If it fails, no more requests can be processed. So, multiple servers are needed to improve robustness, and possibly also performance. In general, there are also multiple clients that wish to interact with the servers. Therefore, we will now consider a distributed system consisting of multiple clients and servers. In the example here, we have two clients and two servers. The two servers are meant to maintain the same state. We will keep it simple with a state that consists of a single numeric variable x. The clients send commands to change the value of x. For example, client 1 wishes to increment x and client 2 wants to multiply x by 2. It may happen that the command of client 1 arrives at server 1 first and the command of client 2 arrives at server 2 first. As a result, server 1 increments x by 1 resulting in x equals 1. On the other hand, x is still 0 after multiplying x by 2. Subsequently, the command of client 1 arrives at server 2 and the command of client 2 arrives at server 1. Once these commands are executed, we see the value of x at server 1 and server 2 are not the same. Obviously, the reason is that the two commands are not commutative. So, in general, it matters in what order the commands are executed. How can we solve this problem? Again, stop the video here and think about possible solutions to this problem. We will resume shortly. This problem is exactly the state replication problem we are trying to solve. Multiple clients send multiple commands to the servers and the servers need to ensure that they all update their local state in a consistent manner. A straightforward solution is to introduce a serializer, a centralized component that collects commands, orders them, and sends them to the servers in that order. In the example here, it receives two commands but only forwards the first command to both servers for processing. Once it receives the response from both servers, it sends the response to client 1. After that, it sends the second command to the servers for processing. The result is returned to the serializer, which in turn forwards it to client 2. This simple approach has an obvious disadvantage. The serializer is a single point of failure. If the serializer is not responsive, the whole system stops functioning. How can we solve this problem? 
Again, you are invited to pause the video and think about this problem for a moment. Instead of having a centralized component, the nodes could collect locks from the servers to get exclusive access as long as they have the locks. Let's consider a simple two-phase protocol. In the first phase, a client asks for the lock from each server. If the locks are still available, the servers send the locks to the client. Once the client has acquired all the locks, it can attach the command and return the locks together with the command. This simple protocol has a few issues. Let's say client 1 requests the locks, but only server 1 has the lock and sends it to client 1. Now client 1 may be waiting a long time until it gets the missing lock. In the worst case, it may be waiting forever because another client is waiting for a different lock. A simple solution to get out of this situation is to return the lock after a timeout and try again later to get the locks. However, the protocol has more severe shortcomings. What if a server is not reachable? In that case, the whole system does not work because no client can get all the locks. One of the main reasons to use multiple servers to begin with is to improve the reliability of the system, but now, the failure of any single server causes the system to fail. And what if a client that has a lock suddenly fails? In this case, we have the same problem because no client can get all the locks anymore. So, the failure of any server or any client that currently holds a lock brings the system to a standstill, which is clearly not what we want. There are many locking-based mechanisms such as two-phase commit and three-phase commit, often called 2PC and 3PC. These protocols have in common that they do not handle permanent failures well. Let's now summarize what we learned in this video. We introduced the important problem of state replication, which is about maintaining a consistent state across multiple nodes, or servers, when dealing with multiple clients that interact with these servers independently and concurrently. We learned that there are quite a few challenges. We can solve the concurrency problems by introducing a centralized serializer but the serializer is a single point of failure. Instead of using a serializer, we can use locks to serialize access, but it is difficult to handle permanent server failures or the failure of clients that currently hold locks. We learned that a more flexible concept than a lock is needed to be able to deal with such failures. Thanks for watching.